Welcome back, everyone, to Hit Confirm. Uh, I'm Austin. I'm Max. Uh, and today, and throughout probably the week or so, we're going to be talking about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and we have a ton to say, because there is a ton to say on this game. Uh, yeah, it's a very um, controversial, it's very polarizing, for sure, so I, I think it's waste no time, get right into it. Uh, for this first part, we're going to be talking about uh, the gameplay, um, because that's boiling down what matters, and uh, in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, the gameplay is a lot of fun. Yeah, at the end of the day, I can definitely, I, I can, every complaint for the game is justified, but the one thing I don't think um, there's a solid argument for is the gameplay being subpar. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people were joking about it's very fun and creative and like the, the sandbox of fighting games. Um, but when you really start to unpack what Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite has, just the the flexibility the game gives you is incredible, and it's it's really fun. At the end of the day, that that's really all you can ask for. It's just real fun. In comparison to like the uh, other Marvel games too, I think it's gameplay wise, it's up there uh, for sure. Um, definitely, uh, there there was a lot of a big uproar about going back to two v two, about removing assists and everything. Yeah. But and I was totally fine with that because. They've done it before, it's nothing new. Yeah, um, Marvel Infinite is definitely a completely uh, new experience, and I think by making the game more freeform, um, just the, the range of like team compositions you can have, and, and the kind of combo potential, and just the way you play neutral completely changes. It, it, mm -hmm. it feels like Marvel without playing like every other Marvel game. The, the, uh, the chaos is still there, even though you know you're not tagging in two assists and like TACs work differently and all that, um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't like boil down to uh, one touch death or neutral that involves complete projectile spamming and filling the screen with as many hitboxes as possible. And there's and and for those who do want to play like that, there certainly is, and we we're getting very close to um uh kind of close to one touch of death combos. But rather than focus on those uh, kind of longer infinites uh -huh, in order to um, kind of secure victory, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is definitely more reset heavy, and it's just knowing when to end your combo for like um, to set up optimal resets and kind of picking things back up from there. So who have we been playing? Go ahead, Max. Who have you been playing? I I, I finally w with. Um, with not to jump too far ahead with the DLC that just came out I finally have I think my solid team for now uh, but before that um, I've been playing um, a lot of uh, a lot of Mega Man a lot of Ultron a lot of um, I've been playing Dante quite a bit and having fun with him and then other than that I, I've given Thanos firebrand um, it's really a lot of characters to try um, mm. everyone in this game is kind of really fun to pick up and play, except for Chris and Spencer. Um, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. But, um, yeah, I think for right now, I'm, I'm definitely playing X and Sigma, uh, specifically. Um, but every single day, I'm, I'm always taking new characters in the training mo mode and seeing what I can find. I, I gotta put a lot of work into Black Panther, who just came out recently, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to, to DLC. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it for me, mostly. Yeah, I've um, I've had uh, learning combos down, getting them so that I can do them again and like online. Uh, it's kicking my ass, but uh, I've been I when I first got the game, I was dead set on learning uh, X and Zero. I'm, I'm just like, worried about X because there are characters that do what he does better. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways, now uh, with the DLC. I'll get into it later again, but uh, I've been using Monster Hunter, and I actually like how uh, the uh, space or timing with her combos work. Um, yeah. I don't know. I've I've usually picked weirdly uh, characters with weirdly timed combos, but Monster Hunter's uh, I don't know, but much easier for me to pick up. Yeah, it clicks with me. Um, I re I haven't had time to bring her online though, and I'm super worried about how she's gonna do with uh, anything you'll see online. 
I but, yeah, she's very interesting. Um, definitely not my character, but um, mm-hmm. just uh, I uh, yesterday specifically at our local, we had somebody who had put in a lot of time with Monster Hunter in like the twenty four hours that she's been out. Um, found a lot of really cool stuff with her, and I'm, that's what I'm happy about is that there no character in this game. Um, feels like really underwhelming and I feel like everybody can make something happen with anybody uh, except for for Chris specifically <laughs> yeah like what um that that's what's so cool about seeing like new characters completely new characters put into a Marvel game is, is how ridiculous they look mm-hmm. like I I didn't think they would work out so well but I, I'm not seeing as much Black Panther but um, Sigma, there's so much uh, we're seeing of Sigma. Yeah, and that's where the, the real shame with the roster kind of lies, is that I feel like if there were some more original characters with completely new uh, tool sets, then um, the game wouldn't be receiving as much negative flack as it is, because all of the new characters that have been added either do really interesting things or definitely kind of fill in the gap where um, uh, absent characters are right now while still bringing a pretty new um, twist to their same gameplay styles. Like, you could say Ultron is kind of the Magneto replacement, but um, just the the stuff he can do with his drones and and, and all is very, uh, very interesting. Um, But I think just a couple of more new characters uh, would have definitely changed the mindset on this game coming out, and we'll just have to see what this DLC pack and future DLC... um, how that mixes up the game and it's unfortunate that it's going to be um post launch content yeah but, oh yeah but even still um we'll get into the game, that later too yeah if the game wasn't fun it, it wouldn't be worth it and it is uh, very fun i think that's the other thing is a lot of the returning characters i feel like have been given enough tools or have been changed just enough to still be interesting and um characters i wouldn't have normally uh, paid attention to before are getting all sorts of new um new players and, and and people giving them a shot there's certainly a lot more people playing arthur oh um, yeah because they they arthur and uh ghost rider arthur ghost rider nemesis is, is they seen. work very well in how this game fundamentally functions yeah it's just w- without all the chaos on the screen those those characters have a lot more room uh to kind of shine and create their own chaos on the screen so how do how do you feel about the stone system now that we're we're about a month or so in? Um, well, this will be a good segue into talking about the competitive scene, um, uh, but as well as online, reality stone is everywhere, and I I I don't they've said they mentioned the Spider Man Infinite. I don't think they've mentioned anything with the reality stone. It is my it is the only stone I really think is an issue. It, um, it's definitely really difficult to deal with right out of the gate. Um, it, it's the most immediately uh, powerful stone just because you, you basically have this tracking projectile that persists even if you get hit. Um, if you do stone, tag somebody else in, you can throw a second stone out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, you can cancel basically any normal into the stone. It, it, it's definitely... Um, very it's a universal. It's a universal projectile, and it's better than a lot of characters' projectiles. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, but I, I think the only reason why Reality Stone is so prevalent right now is simply because nobody else has really put the time into the other stones. I, I'm thinking, I've been playing with Space Stone a whole lot, which um, on just regular activation, the Surge will pull. Uh, opponents closer to you, and then with the storm, it'll trap them in a box. Just the uh, the mix-ups you can get out of that are so strong. Um, there, there's just the game's still too new, and I, I think the only reason why Reality Stone is so prevalent right now is because um, it, it's so immediately rewarding to pick. Yeah. Um, whereas as time passes. The only stone that feels really weak to me right now is Mind Stone, and that's just because its regular surge is kind of weak. But being able to get rapidly regenerating meter is really good for some teams, especially if you play like Doctor Strange, uh, benefits very heavily from that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's a true case where it's I guess it's just gonna take time to see. 
for sure. where it goes. It, uh, it is it is ridiculously overused, but it might balance out in time. Yeah, the, um, the counter, the surefire counter for Reality Stone is definitely perfect advancing guards. Just reflect it right back. Um, and then, as far as uh, the uh, storm itself goes, because Reality Storm, of course, every button creates a different, basically, full-screen projectile from, like, a low-hitting ice move to a vertical lightning attack. Yeah. Uh, the best thing you can possibly do is block. Blocking is so important in this game just being able to play patiently and kind of respecting what the other person does um, is is probably one of the best strategies. And it, it's always been the case with almost every fighting game, but this game specifically, if mm -hmm. you think something's really difficult to deal with, like Soulstone, dealing with pressure from two characters, the best thing you can possibly do is just block and wait for your chance, because your chance will come. Um, so yeah, that's... That's how I feel about Reality Stone, but personally, I think yeah. every stone has their own, um... They all seem kind of even. The only, um, separating factor is how much, um... How much time's been put in with each. Like, nobody's done stuff with Mind Stone. I haven't seen too many Mind Stone setups. Um, I know for a fact, uh... Time Stone, you can get away with some crazy, um, shit, but nobody really... Nobody really focuses on that. I know Power Stone's doing all right right now, but Reality, Soul, and Space are definitely um, the top used stones right now. For yeah, sure. and but it's still Reality by a large gap. Yeah, for sure. Then we can talk about uh, the competitive scene and where it is right now, which uh, you talked about it before, and I thought it was surprising. So, how is the MVCI scene in Florida right now? Um. In terms of Central Florida, um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is doing uh, very well. And a lot's happened since the last time we've done a hit confirm. Um, I now do uh, streams for CEO events. Um, I actually I streamed pools all the way until tops, top 8 for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite at CEO Taku. Um, and all I can say is that people seem to be really enjoying the game. Everyone's giving it a shot right now at the very least, and at the very most, we have probably around six events um, in the area a month, to the point where um, we had a schedule conflict, because uh, we host a monthly uh, for Tekken, and this was the first month we added Marvel, and it happened to overlap with an event in Tampa that was also doing Marvel, and all the players that went to that event in Tampa I expressed that if we moved the event back a day to Thursdays, they would attend both. Mm. So people want to play this game, they want to compete in this game, they want to grow, and it's really cool seeing kind of week after week at our locals how everyone's kind of improving, how somebody will show up with a different stone or, you know, have swapped out a character, and just uh, really seeing how people are picking apart the game. And We, we have a very healthy, um, diverse kind of selection of um, characters. Everybody's, for the most part, playing different stuff. We definitely have a lot of people who like Gamora, uh, and Ultron, Thanos is a really popular team around here, because both of those characters are very good, but overall, I'd say, competitively, the game's doing really well. Um, the only thing that, that's kind of weird and kind of questionable is is what they're doing with the Battle for the Stones kind of tournament. <laughs> You can probably speak to this more as a spectator, because admittedly, I haven't really watched too much, um, too many tournaments. I've mostly just been hosting them. Uh, it's it's very weird to me that uh, basically the week of your game coming out, you start a basically a miniature league. Um, yeah. And uh, those top players of it have already had access to the game, though. So. Yeah, and and we can even see now though that that hasn't made much of a difference between because. Oh yeah. Funny enough, or, or I guess not funny enough, we've lost another game to Sonic Fox, the god. Um, yeah, they said he couldn't do it, and he did it. He did it. He won CEO Taku. I watched it with my own two eyes. Uh, he uh, he beat Filipino Champ, who has definitely had access to this game and been able to play it for much longer than most other people. Um, we are definitely in the period of time where that early advantage is gone. Um, mm -hmm. But... It, it, it's very. I'm. I'm happy the game's doing 
at, at least competitively, uh, as well as it is right now. Um, yeah, like, this isn't a game, like, uh, even when they first announced it, it, or it, it seemed like they were going to market it to casuals, but this is not a casual game. No. And the uh, getting into it is still pretty difficult, and I think that's what's part of it and why the uh, early advantage wasn't too massive, because it's going to take years to for for the top players to refine themselves which is why watching the game watching the top players now uh it's very common they're dropping stuff um or missing stuff and and flubbing up that's just how it is with learning it and it wasn't like that with street fighter 5 because that was so radically uh fundamental especially for them and then we have this game where uh it's it's not in in a in a year like this game's gonna look sick. Like it's it's pacing is already like uh, pretty fast compared to like three. Um, in in a year, this game's gonna uh, competitively top play is gonna look insane. Yeah, um, I, I definitely think it's weird when when they were talking about making this more accessible for for casual fans. <laughs> I think what ended up happening is. Um, if, if you're just looking to play a fighting game casually, uh, don't play Marvel Online, um, <laughs> because the moment you see some of the dumb bullshit in this game, um, it will immediately turn you off. Yeah, you can't, um, I, I, I can, you, when you go online, your objective isn't to, uh, win, it's to have, like, mini victories in your, in your battle, where you're, uh, learning, essentially. Yeah. And I, I, I think learning is a big part of it, where it's like, if you have no desire to learn and you and you hop online, the, the moment you get hit with your first, like, overhead low one-frame difference, like, mix-up, you're gonna want to stop playing the game. But I feel like if you're the type who wants to, like, I want to learn how to do that, it's easier than ever to start learning quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Where it's like... It's not a good game for casual players, but it is a good game if those casual players want to learn to get better. Um, I feel like being able to do a lot of what's considered high-level stuff right now is relatively easy, where the first couple of times you see a combo, you can kind of get a feel for it, and then even if you don't do it exactly the same, you can still kind of freeform it into your own thing a lot easier than uh, a lot of other games right now. Mm -hmm. So, while it's not a game for casuals, I, I feel like it, it's been made a little bit easier to get to the same level um, a lot of players are at competitively, for sure. I'm winning more matches in this game than any other fighting game I've ever played. That's probably a testament to how, uh, how, how uh, easy it is to kind of pick up and start learning. Well, that's what I was, uh, when, when I'm learning monster hunter that's what i was i was doing as i was seeing what other people were doing um and there's some crazy shit she can do um and and i'm watching that video back i'm i i see exactly how they do it they have the inputs on uh it's just some ridiculous timing so i can i can still just take what i can do add on to it add on to the beginning of it and I'm actually still getting like 6,000 damage out of what they showed. Mm -hmm. And that's one little tidbit of advice I can give anyone, is if, if you are looking to find this game, find one character that you really, really like. Learn how to do 6,000 damage with just them. Find another character you like, do 6,000 damage with that, just them, and then start worrying about your tag combos. All right, so we've touched on everything we want to talk about um, gameplay-wise for now. Um, so we're gonna cut this segment here, and we're gonna jump right into the next segment, uh, in the next video, which we'll be cutting now. Alright. Uh, see you in the next video. See you next time. <laughs>